If you're watching this video right now, you're probably asking yourself, what price should you price your self-published book? One of the best aspects of self-publishing your own book means that you have control over most aspects of your book. However, that also comes with its own challenges because you have to determine things such as the price of the book and what price will optimally generate the most amount of sales for you. Now, maybe you're self-publishing your own book through Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing platform and you're asking yourself if it will be best to price your book as a premium, that way you make more profit per book sold. In other words, charging more money than what your competitors are charging for their books, that way you can make more profit margin for every book sold. Inversely, you might also be thinking to yourself that you should maybe price your book below the market price, so pri pricing your book cheaper than what the competitors are charging. That way you can be the cheaper option amongst your competitors. This way you can attract much more sales but at a smaller profit margin. With all that being said, what is the most optimal way for you to price your book and for you to make the most amount of money. What I'm going to attempt to do in this video is share my personal best strategy that I've successfully used and I've shared with many of my students and it's been responsible for generating literally tens of thousands of book sales and I'm going to share it with you in this video. Now before we dive deep and before we go any further in this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. It helps the algorithm. It helps me keep stay motivated and if you'd like to learn more about Amazon Digital Publishing and all things related to that business. Again, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And also, I don't have any kind of upload schedule. I try to get a video out each and every week. However, I don't have a schedule. So be sure to also hit that notification bell if you'd like to get notified once I do upload new videos. So let me begin by introducing you something that should be pretty fundamental to you and it's called the law of diminishing returns. It's also sometimes called the point of diminishing returns. If you're gonna be working for yourself, then chances are you're gonna be pricing things a lot of times, and in order to determine certain things, you kinda have to grasp this concept. So at the very beginning, you'll see the productive phase, so it's kind of like a bell curve, which is growing exponentially faster than the later portion of it, and that exponential growth is called the productive phase. And basically it, it summarizes as the, at the start, every unit of input leads to productive gains, right? So every time you increase the price initially, when the price is not so expensive, it leads to people buying, right? We can use this uh, law of diminishing returns in many different scenarios. Now, at a certain point, uh, kind of in the middle uh, portion of the graph, uh, the, 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 the curve starts to basically not grow as quickly as it did earlier in the productive phase. So this portion is called the diminishing returns. So upon hitting the point of diminishing returns, every additional input will give you a slower gain in output. So this kind of means that once you start pricing your book in the average price, the minute you start incrementally increasing the price, right, you're gonna start getting less and less traction when it comes to getting more and more customers. And at the very top, you have a point of maximum output, which means you have a price point where that it is ideal for your market, right? A price point which will yield the most amount of customers and will also give you the biggest profit margin. Now, the last portion of the graph is the negative returns, right? And this is when you price your book too expensively and you kind of start shooting yourself in the foot because if you reach this phase, every additional input will give you a negative returns, right? Now, when you're pricing your book, and for this video, I'll be using Amazon, like I said, since it's one of the most popular platforms to self-publish your own books, uh, but it could be any other platform, right? But as you can see on the screen, on the Amazon pricing page, when you're uploading your book to the platform, you have to kind of go over uh, and see the costs, right? So the printing cost, and you have to take that into consideration, and you also have to take into consideration Amazon's fees, right? So on eBooks, they'll take about 30%, and not about, they will take 30%, and on print books, they'll take their 40% cut. So what you're left with, the road is actually your profit margin. So how much profit you make per book sold. So now that we've went over the law of diminishing returns and you're kind of at this Amazon or this pricing stage and you're asking yourself, you know, what should I price my book? How do I not shoot myself in the foot and start getting negative returns? And how do I not 
uh, stay in the productive phase, how do I reach that point of maximum output, right? Where you get the most amount of profit margin and you get the most customers, right? Now, I hate to be the bearer of bad news and tell you this, but the reality is there won't be a one size fits all answer to basically be able to price your book at the optimal uh, maximum output level. As with most things in life, it'll depend on several, several factors for you to be able to reach that optimal maximum point. And these factors are what I want to address now. So let's just say as a first case scenario, you're a brand new self publisher publishing in a brand new niche and you have no assets to leverage and by assets I mean you have no social media following no you have no authority you have no email subscribers right if this is you right now that means you have no assets to leverage in this brand new niche that you're publishing in so let's say if you self-published and wrote your own book or you got a ghostwriter which is a writer that you pay and you get to keep all the royalties afterwards let's just say knitting socks uh, I don't know, 101, right? Knitting Socks 101 as a book topic and you're entering this brand new niche for the very first time and you have no uh, email list and you have no social media uh, fans to basically communicate with and to basically be able to leverage to launch your book. If you don't have that, it's gonna be an uphill battle to market your book because you still have to establish yourself now for the very first time in this brand new niche. Therefore, in order to give yourself and your book its best chance of marketing itself and gaining authority, and by authority, I mean gaining reviews and, and therefore generating more sales momentum, I recommend you price your book well below the average market price. And the reason is very, very simple, and it's a basic natural human law. People are always looking to save a buck. We're betting on the fact that a lot of people are going to be looking for a deal. Now, this isn't always the case, right? However, we're betting on the fact that a lot of people will be shopping based on price and we want to gain their attention, right? We want to gain the attention of all those people looking to save some money, right? So we're going to be pricing our book well below our competitors because we don't have any authority. We don't have any kind of social media following and we're not some sort of known celebrity. If you've ever went to a pharmacy before and you see all the name brands, so the big name brands, they're always going to be at the eye level, right? When you're walking into a retail store, they're going to be at the very top at the eye level for you to grab and reach. The reality is because those brands have authority, right? They have those name brands that you instantly, that consumers instantly recognize, right? they're able to mark up the price of the product however typically when you look beneath the shelves so not at eye level you'll more than likely see the no name brands so the brands that don't have any kind of authority right however what they usually do is price their products way below the average market price and they do that for the very same reason we're pricing our book well below the average market price it's in order to gain the attention of a certain percentage of consumers who are looking to save money and this is how your book begins to gain momentum and gain some traction by the way this is also the productive phase of the point of diminishing the returns chart so now enough theories and let's go through some real life examples directly on amazon so what i'm going to start off by doing is just i'm on amazon's website so amazon.com and the category section i'm going to put books and let's go with the example that i said that we published a book about knitting socks uh 101 right let's use that so let's just say hypothetically we were a brand new self publisher and we were pub, uh, publishing uh, in this particular niche under this particular keyword. And what you want to do now at this particular stage is evaluate the competition. So as we can see, the very first uh, number one uh, search results appearing has 21 reviews and they're pricing their paperback at $19.99 and their Kindles at $9.99. The one underneath that, 34 reviews, $39.99 for a paperback. Well, it's a lot of money. Not quite sure how much she's charging for the Kindle. I'll have to open a new tab. Paperback on the third results, $24.99. Uh, this fourth results, it's not really showing. Uh, fifth result, $18.79. You typically $19.95. Kindle, $9.99. Uh, the one after that, so the sixth results uh, for the spiral bound, $24.99. Kindle's $9.99. Paperback, $16.99. So what I'm getting the feel for is everyone's kind of pricing their Kindle at $9.99. 
at $9.99 and their paperback, quite a lot of money. I mean, this particular person, which I think was the third search result, is at $39.99 for the paperback. Uh, this other person, well, he's kind of giving away his book and he's got horrible reviews. So it's not even considered that person. But in general, I mean, there's this one person here that's probably got the most amount of reviews, so probably the most authority at 1079. Kindle's at 1070.25. Whoops, there's my cat uh, messing everything up. So let me just cut for a second, or let's go back. <laughs> let's just keep it in. So in this particular example, if I was publishing a brand new book in this niche under this particular keyword, after evaluating the short few competitors, right, in the top five uh, search results, what I would do is probably price my paperback at $14.99 or $14.95 uh, or even $9.95. And I would price my Kindle at $2.99. Again, what you want to do initially in the productive phase is to gain momentum, right? So therefore, we want to get the attention of those people that are shopping that are extremely price sensitive so we can get some traction, right? So I would price my book again. I have to do some more research. By research, I mean looking at more competitors, uh, looking at different variations of this keyword. So in the knitting socks, in the knitting, and just get a sense of what the averages are. Again, I'm not an expert in this particular keyword, in this particular niche. I have never published a book on this. I don't know anybody that does. Well, actually, I do know people that are somewhat in this, not really related. So I would price my book underneath. This is uh, underneath the average price. But again, this is at first glance, uh, based on the top five, six, 10 search results, I would price my book paperback at $14.99, $9.99, uh, somewhere around that range. So I'm well below the average price as, uh, as we learned. And I would price my ebook at somewhere around $2.99, you know, $3.99, $4.99, but I would really stick to $2.99 just so I can get the attention of those people that are shopping that are price sensitive. Now, I can't stress this enough. The point of doing this, of intentionally keeping your price below the average price, is for you to start gaining momentum in order for you to start attracting those people that are price sensitive to purchase your book in order for those people to leave reviews, for your book to gain more authority, and for you to basically uh, start getting sales momentum. The goal initially is not to get rich and to make as much money as humanly possible, which I think we all want to make uh, money from our book, right? However, initially, that is not the name of the game, especially if you're a brand new publisher in a brand new niche, you have no social media following and no review and no nothing, right? So if you don't have any of those assets to leverage, you're unfortunately going to have to go through this productive phrase, which is a bit slower versus if you were already an established publisher in this particular niche. Now, this isn't the same advice I would recommend to someone that's already a uh, self-publisher and that's already published multiple book uh, in a particular niche, right? If you already have that authority, if you already have a social media following, if you're a celebrity, quote unquote celebrity in your particular niche, right? And you have an email list of subscribers, people that you can communicate to, then you can kind of skip ahead this entire productive phase and price your book at the average market price or well above it. So in the hypothetical uh, scenario that we were publishing in the Knitting Socks 101 and you were an expert at that and you had a social media following of knitting, of people that love that stuff and you had email subscribers and you're already a known authority in that niche, then what you could do is completely skip ahead from the production phase and basically price your book at the optimal uh, maximum output. So you can price your book at the average market price or well above it, right? So you can price your ebook at $699, $899, $999 uh, in terms of the print book or the paperback, I would price it at $19.95. Again, this is all based on the small uh, few minutes of research that I've gathered, right? Now, something extremely important that I still didn't address and that it's something that you must know and that is the following. The majority of people shopping and purchasing books, especially nonfiction books, aren't looking for a bargain, right? They aren't looking for the cheapest thing out there. Typically, they associate the cheaper price with the lesser of quality, right? Most people shopping for these, uh, especially like I said, nonfiction books, are looking for the book with the highest value, right? In order to solve the pain, the problem, the boredom, whatever emotion they are looking to fill, right? Whatever that thing they're looking to solve, they are actually looking to, for that book that will solve that problem. And typically, they associate the book with the highest price 
with the highest value to solve their problems. And I can give you a concrete scenario to prove this natural human law. Uh, let's just say you were shopping for a used car and you found a vehicle that's fully working and whatnot that costs about, let's just say $20,000, right? And right next to that vehicle, you'd see another one priced at $60,000. Now, obviously, you would say to yourself that both these cars can do the exact same uh, job that you wanted to do, right? Uh, get you from point A to point B. However, you would associate a higher value, right, towards the car that is priced at 60000 right? Because you'd say to yourself, hey, it must have better features. It must be more comfortable. It must have all these positive features that you associate to it, right? This is an example of a natural human law. Now, obviously, if you price your book too expensively, as we saw in the graph, then you're going to begin having negative returns. You're going to be pushing away a percentage of customers that don't want to spend that amount of money. So the key here is to price your book at the optimal maximum output. And sometimes it's going to be a matter of trial and error, basically pricing your book at a certain price, increasing, decreasing, and seeing where you can make the most, generate the most number of sales uh, while keeping a very, very high profit margin. So hopefully this video gave you some insights and helped you uh, price your self-published book. Some of the stuff I might have shared with you might seem like common knowledge, but I assure you, common knowledge is not common practice. And I see this every single day on Amazon. Books that have no rank, that are completely overpricing themselves, generating no sales whatsoever. So take these strategies to heart, implement them today, and I hope you got some value out of this video. If you enjoyed this, and you like to have more videos about Amazon book publishing and more strategies, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. As I mentioned earlier, I don't have an upload schedule. I try to get a video uploaded each and every week, but I really don't have a schedule to be quite honest with you. So be sure to hit that notification bell to get notified and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.